Right. Well, if we have to find a silver lining to the gloom and the fog that has been just blanketing portions of the Treasure Valley over the last few days due to the inversion, is that some places look a bit like a winter wonderland because of the ice and frost that have created almost snow-like conditions in some places. And if you get really close, you start seeing these cool little needles of ice like Janelle Ellis Oxley did. And she posted this photo in our Idaho Weather Watchers Facebook page. I know a lot of you are seeing these ice formations on trees and branches and fences outside your window. So I thought we'd take a moment and talk about what we're seeing. So there's two different things that this could be, rime ice or hoarfrost. I've seen hoarfrost mentioned quite a bit. So I want to take a moment and explain the difference between these two phenomenons because really on the surface, they look almost identical. But most of what I think we're seeing out there, especially in those areas that are socked in, is rime ice. So this picture is from Kimberly Miller. I also in our Idaho Weather Watchers page, you see those needles of ice. That is rhyming. So rhyming happens with foggy, cold, calm conditions. So water droplets within the fog freeze to those already frozen surfaces. So they go from their liquid phase, a water droplet, to the solid phase, that ice, right? Now the difference between rime ice and hoarfrost is with hoarfrost, this happens on clear, cold, calm night. So you won't see any fog out there when hoarfrost develops. So this goes straight from water vapor to ice. It's called sublimation. That um, water vapor skips the liquid phase, freezes straight on contact with those surfaces. So they are formed very differently, but they can look almost identical. Regardless, I know we've seen a lot of pictures of what looks like, again, a winter wonderland out there. It's looked really pretty at times. It almost looks like it's been snowing across portions of the valley. There's some freezing fog out there that's been contributing to that look. We could have a few flurries across the region over the next couple of days, but really it is that dense fog that is the big concern. You can see where it's just blanketing the I-84 corridor west of Boise. It's been intruding a little bit towards the Boise area, retreating a bit right now, but we continue our dense fog advisory for the entire Treasure Valley through two o'clock on Friday afternoon, as I do expect that fog to encroach on Boise a little more Thursday and Friday, and air stagnation advisories continue across our entire viewing area area through Saturday. That is the day we're really watching Saturday into Sunday as our ridge of high pressure remains very stubbornly in place over the Pacific Northwest until Saturday morning. Then we're watching a system that is very far off to the west right now that will be on the move over the next several days. And by Saturday night, it'll start driving a cold front through and that will likely be strong enough to scour out the inversion, get our atmosphere back to where it belongs, where we'll see colder temperatures in the mountains, milder temperatures in the lower elevations. The irony here, though, is that as the front comes through, our temperatures will actually warm. So here's what we're looking at in Boise for the next couple of days. Highs only in the mid 30s. We're likely looking at only upper 20s in the lower valley west of Boise. But then Saturday, up to 41 degrees. As that front approaches, the wind will start picking up. That's what will mix up our atmosphere. We'll see a little bit of precipitation with this system, especially Sunday morning. Rain and snow showers possible. And while temperatures do drop back down into the upper 30s Monday and Tuesday, June, we think should look a lot better, especially again in those areas where we haven't seen the sun in a couple of days. So yeah. hopefully that all changes this weekend. And Rachel, since the fog is staying around, I wanted to repeat a, a piece of advice I always hear. You want to keep okay. it slow and keep it low when you're driving in the fog. So slow that speed down yep. and use the low uh, head beams. You don't want to go high on that because it could uh, blind you and blind. Exactly right. Drivers. Great advice. All right. Thank you, Rachel. You